Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Stevens, co-chair of the KDGO Clinical Practice Guideline for the Evaluation and Management of Chronic Kidney Disease, and I'm going to share some key takeaways for nephrologists in the evaluation of people with CKD. So let's just remind ourselves of the definition of chronic kidney disease first. And CKD is defined as abnormalities of kidney structure or function present for more than three months with implications for health. And what is frequently underappreciated is that the definition includes many different markers of kidney damage, not just decreased GFR and increased ACR. And it's also crucial that the cause of chronic kidney disease should be actively sought. CKD is classified according to cause, GFR and ACR or the CGA classification and that's to establish severity and guide the type and timing of interventions. It's also important to establish chronicity and to distinguish between acute kidney disease and chronic kidney disease. And the rationale for defining chronicity is to differentiate chronic kidney disease from acute kidney diseases, including acute kidney injury, which may require different guidance related to timelines for initiation of treatments, different interventions, and have different etiologies and outcomes. And also by establishing chronicity, you may either find that the person you're evaluating doesn't yet present with chronic kidney disease, but they remain at risk, and you'll need to assess the timing of retesting in the future. Or you'll find the person meets the criteria for chronic kidney disease, and then you'll need to more accurately evaluate GFR. To stage the severity of chronic kidney disease, you'll need to establish the underlying cause, and you'll need to estimate the risk of progression and initiate treatment. We always need to be mindful that chronic kidney disease impacts people across the lifespan. And as a chronic condition, the care we give is influenced by changes in life circumstances. So I want to remind you to use an individualized approach to diagnosis, risk assessment, and management that considers age, sex, and gender. At the extremes of age, the very young and the very old, diagnostic procedures, treatment aims, treatment modalities, and decision-making differ. This can be due to differences in prognosis, in treatment options, in prioritization, and in patient preferences and choice. So we really want to keep these special considerations in mind and truly understand the people we're evaluating. So what about diagnosis of chronic kidney disease in adults 65 and older? We know that there's an age-related decline in GFR of around 0.6 to 0.8 mils per minute per year, depending on which study you look at, but age-related changes in structure and function are more than just the GFR number, and they increase susceptibility to significant events. And it's therefore no surprise that epidemiological population data support retaining the threshold GFR of 60 mils per minute for diagnosis of CKD. And that remains true even in the absence of significant albuminuria with consistently elevated and increasing relative risk of adverse outcomes below this threshold. We do have the ability to improve the accuracy of our GFR assessment. The 2024 guideline states that greater accuracy can be gained by estimating GFR from a combination of creatinine and cystatin C. That not only improves the accuracy of the estimate, but critically also strengthens risk relationships and mitigates the influence of non-GFR determinants of these biomarkers. We also make the point that GFR should be measured where more accurate ascertainment of GFR will impact treatment decisions. We want accurate and reliable evaluations. So we have to understand the variability of GFR and urinary albumin and the value and limitations of the methodology of assessment when determining whether a change is a true change. Do you as nephrologists know what assays your laboratory uses for serum creatinine and urine albumin and what the analytical variation is? Does your laboratory implement the requisite laboratory standards of care? You can find these laboratory standards detailed in the 2024 guideline. There are, of course, various methods to estimate GFR, and there are now a number of different estimating equations. So which one should we use? We should use a validated GFR estimating equation to derive GFR from serum filtration markers, an equation that has been validated in the population of interest and use the same equation within geographical regions so that we're always comparing apples with apples, whilst recognising that the equations that we use may differ for adults and children. 
We also think it's very important for nephrologists to consider that point of care tests for creatinine, both blood and saliva, and urine albumin measurement are now available. And these point of care tests, if adequately quality assured, are accurate enough to facilitate the clinical pathway where access to a laboratory is either limited or non-existent. Validated risk assessment tools should be used to aid in decision-making and timing of multidisciplinary care informed by the clinical context. Choose the appropriate tool for the event of interest, whether that's kidney failure treatment, cardiac events, or mortality, and confirm that that equation has been validated in the population of interest. We encourage nephrologists in partnership with patients to tailor the timing of follow-up and reassessment by using validated risk prediction tools and clinical evaluation. And this approach, together with patient and carer education, may inform better selection of targets of care. And this will, in turn, better support people and families living with chronic kidney disease. This approach is part of longitudinal care. And that concludes our top 10 takeaways. Thank you for watching. And on behalf of everyone involved in creating this guideline, I want to say that we're all very proud of the work that we've done. And we hope it will meaningfully support both clinicians and the people we care for around the world. The full clinical practice guideline can be accessed online at www.kdigo.org.